can leave this for now, but no, not necessary to put that. It just confuses people. Yeah, leave it there. Why? Well, you need to. No, I can't freeze it. You need to not present. You need to go to your wherever your. Oh, hang on. I can. I can change presenter. Hold on. But then. No, I c actually, I can. You want me to freeze it? I can do it now. Yeah. Okay, I've stopped it. I've just paused the screen a second. I've just paused. I've just paused it for a second, uh, Kodwo. Hmm? No, I've paused. No. Oh, okay. Stop. Hmm? Can I start? Tell me when I can start. No, that's fine. Hmm? Okay. Uh, Kodwa, I've just frozen the screen. Is that okay? Hmm. I think I can hear me. Ready? Actually, get rid of that. Just get rid of it. Okay. So, ready? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Um, let me just get the this the this the screen. Okay, you can't. Can you see my screen or not? Uh, what can you see? River Valley Technologies. No. Yeah. Okay. Let me change. Hold on a second. Yeah, my desktop is very bad. That you weren't supposed to see that, but you have now. Give me one second. Ah, there we go. You should be able to see the um, River Valley Technologies. Excellent. Okay. Um, what we did, you you had um, you had a, a, a list of a few things you wanted to see again, and what I thought I'd do is to ask. Um, uh, just, just to give uh, uh, um, just a little bit of variety, I've got uh, Shaji here, who is the lead developer. I thought that uh, he would give a very quick introduction, just uh, um, a kind of basics of, of what we have, and then answer the, the questions that you had, um, and, uh, and then any questions, uh, extra questions that you have uh, after that. Does that sound good? Yeah, so please jump in if, uh, at any time, obviously, if you have questions. 
But um, I'll hand over to Shaji. Hi, I'm um, Shaji, developer of uh, Rovalia Technologies. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate you some basic features. Uh, take one minute. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Hold on, let me see if I can change, maybe you can speak through that microphone, yeah? I'll mute and use, yeah, we'll just change microphones. Hold on. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Uh, I want to uh, uh, talk uh, about a quick presentation uh, where we will uh, 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 demonstrate uh, your unique features, features once again. Once again. So, so, these are our, these are our main unique features main unique that, features that you that may not find in other peer review systems. System. One is, uh, in, our system, in our system, you system, can handle you multiple, can handle multiple journals, journals, journals in a single in installation. A single installation. So, so, you don't need multiple installations or any other uh, kind of uh, work around to handle multiple journals, uh, to peer review multiple journals. Even uh, in a single system, you can uh, uh, peer review books, journals, articles, upsides, any kind of thing. You can peer review in a single system. And the uh, second feature we have is a core user roles and uh, extended user roles. That means uh, you can create your own user roles. If you want uh, editorial board members, you can create editorial board members without uh, coming to the developers or programmers. Mm -hmm. So, any number of volunteers, I mean, sorry, any number of user words you can create by yourself without any other help. And uh, the another important feature we have is uh, generic forms. Uh, that means to create uh, a, uh, create or modify some input fields for if you want uh, to add some more questions uh, to the author or if you want to have some more feedback from the reviewer you can create that fields by yourself uh, you can put proper validation proper error messages even you can put dependencies i can show you that later and uh, one of our very unique feature is workflow manager that means you can create uh, manage create and manage the flow of a flow of an article like a flowchart, it's it's a it's simple uh, diagram flowchart where a uh, very no, very normal user can create complex workflow and uh, manage the entire flow of an article. And uh, another one, custom classification. That means uh, mostly uh, the classifications of articles, of tracks, journals are different. Sometimes it will be sections, and sometimes it will be topic, subjects, keywords, anything. Uh, so uh, these are there, there might be some uh, some sometimes it's only a label change, but sometimes uh, it's referring some India uh, different list of values. For keywords, you may have uh, another uh, list of value. You, you, you need to use a list of keywords. For subject, you need to use another list of subjects. Those old things you can be uh, it can be managed in a custom classification module and. Uh, the uh, another important thing is you can even you can make it hierarchical. That means uh, if I select uh, you, you create two classifications. If I select uh, a particular value for one classification, you can say then show these kind of classification, these kind of second set of classification, that kind of thing. I can demonstrate you that later. So I'm going forward. Uh, first thing is uh, as I said, uh, our, our most unique feature: multiple journals in a single system. I will show you our home page of our system. You can see this our yeah this is our home page. I'm um, I'm logging as super admin. Uh, it's no matter whether any user any user logged in the system, he will see these kind of journals. It will be uh, it's in a uh, development. I, I'm showing you from directly from our development version. So uh, the UA new UA graphics are not flashy graphics are not there. Simple uh, representation of these journals. Uh, these are. E these each blocks are representing each journal. If you want to go to one journal, you can click on that journal, journal for engineering. Here you will be, uh, our, our, based on our user roles, here you may be a editor, editor in chief, 
associate editor over the, or anything. So a particular user with a single login can be editor in one journal, author in another journal, reviewer in a third journal and together these three roles together in a separate journal. That is the kind of uh, way we develop this system. And uh, I am going back. So this is the uh, important points. Uh, you need only 10 minutes to create a journal by your own and uh, configuration everything. And uh, it shares the user base. Uh, so don't no need to create separate users for separate journal. If you have 1000 users, uh, when you create another journal, all 1000 users will be automatically member for this. Only you need to specify the user roles they have. And uh, I'm moving to the second. If you have any questions, uh, in, between you can ask me. So the second is core user roles. Uh, user role is uh, different. I mean, I, I have explained it previously. Uh, some people need EBM, editorial board member. Some people need user roles, guest reviewer, associate editor, chief editor. I mean, lot of actually those are ideas. We studied the system and we found that uh, a peer review system needs actually five core roles. One is staff. Admin, then editor in chief, associate editor, reviewer, and other. So you can extend any kind of role from these basic uh, user roles. So a guest editor may be extended from associate editor user role. A editorial board member can be associate editor. I mean, you, you just need to extend. I will demonstrate so so you will find it uh, easy. So this is the user role screen uh, you have. Here we have extended some user roles. On left side, role name. This is the extended user roles. Editorial assistant, assistant editor. And this is the core user role. If we want editorial board member, who is, uh, mostly he will do the jobs of associate editor. Uh, meantime, I can say when you go see the workflow, you will uh, find the significance of creating multiple user roles and the extending user roles. You just need to create. While Sharj is doing, say, uh, doing that, ju just to say, it's a very subtle feature we have core user roles and, and the, uh, the, the user role. So that sort of uh, layer that we've put, it gives you a lot more flexibility than just having uh, uh, user roles. Sorry, go ahead, Shirji. Now uh, you have created a, editor, a new role, user role, editorial board member, uh, which is extended from core user role, uh, associate editor. You can create another user role which is exempt from associate editor, but these two in, in this screen also you can see junior associate editor and editorial board member. Actually, those two are, two are extended from associate editor. But when it comes to the real system, uh, it is no matter from where it is extended. It's uh, related to the workflow. Uh, you define in workflow each stage will be represented in a block, so it's uh, different. Uh, what user role you assign to a blog? No other user user can user role can enter into that uh, stage and do anything. I mean, uh, in the demonstration you can see that when I come to work. Role. So the uh, and I already told you uh, a user a user can multiple user role in same journal and uh, in multiple journals and. Uh, it's another uh, unique feature we have. We have a highly flexible generic form. You, uh, you, may, you may aware of uh, form creators. Uh, it's available with the most of the uh, content management system. But ours is uh, it's somewhat uh, more sophisticated. So uh, you can create any kind of complicated forms uh, be, uh, in this using this generic form, and uh, it can even have dependencies. Dependencies means. Uh, you, you have a question from where uh, are you a degree holder? If yes, fill in the uh, fill in your college name and address, etc. etc. So, if you set a dependency, 
if they select yeah i am a degree holder only then the rest of the box will appear uh, you don't need to know programming and you don't don't need to come to us you can create this form by yourself using our generic form builder i will show you uh, the feature of our generic form builder this is the generic form builder in the home page of generic form builder there is a lot of forms we have already created i will go from this is the structure of a generic form builder we have uh, there is one question is already added figures included yes or no i can edit this uh, question and adding another answer later you can see there is one later order hmm? there is one uh, yeah you can see now there is another option later answer option later have included in the screen uh, you can add another elements uh, i am adding a text a text box name yes uh, you can even define how many characters are allowed in this thing and uh, place order Required, okay. If it is required, uh, anything. Most of you can see a lot of options are appearing in the screen. Mm -hmm. Depends, you know. So now you can see a name box appeared above this, and uh, I'm going to add another option and element. Uh, sorry, and. Uh, there is one already one question figures included yes or no so i am going to add some fields if what, what if the user select yes uh, text box uh, type box record yes i am setting the dependency yes here so some another options appear which one is the dependency control Figures included is a dependency control. What is the depending value? Yes. So I am saying this. Show this uh, field type of figure only if the user selected yes in figures included. You cannot see here because it's only uh, showing you a. Uh, it's the configuration screen and we're just showing you, uh, give, just showing these controls to give you an idea. But in a real time, I mean when you plug it into a stage or uh, yeah, when you plug it, plug this form into a stage, uh, it will act as a normal form, normal design form. This is the generic form we have. And uh, you can see these boxes are if these boxes are groups, these uh, these gray boxes are group, and uh, you can add as many as groups you need. I mean, uh, these are title for group. So when the form appears, this should be a no small title, and uh, this is the field. Should be the field. Here. This is the title, and uh, this will be the field. So I'm going back to my presentation. Uh, yeah, this is over. Uh, the next is uh, workflow manager. Maybe you you already seen our workflow manager. The charm is we are using only HTML5 to create this uh, workflow manager, HTML5 and canvas control. So uh, the compatibility maximum, uh, you can uh, work on this workflow manager in almost all the browsers, uh, contemporary browsers. I can show you uh, the workflow we have. This is a kind of workflow generating scheme. Here you can see there is a submission and an assessment, a review, a decision, publish. This is a normal workflow, but you can create any complicated level of workflow. I will show uh, another one which is much complicated than this.
here you can see after final decision there is uh, two, two kind of uh, actions one is we are asking the author to revise paper and another is uh, the follow submit copyright block, those kind of things uh, the beauty is you can loop it back loop it back to a certain stage it means some kind of stage so here is revise paper this is a stage and going back and uh, Looking it back, update. Now you can see it's a graphical representation. If the final decision is revised paper and uh, the responsible person to do this task is, you can see, for the responsible person to do this task, user role is over and uh, resubmission is a form, generic form we are created. So once the other com comes to in this stage, he will see uh, the other details, other details of article and this resubmission form we have created, he will fill those details and he will submit. Then once he submits, the paper will go to the assay editor this role. From here this will go and even another loop is possible, any kind of loop is possible. This is the uh, way you can uh, manage. Uh, your workflow in our system. I will show you uh, the details. Uh, yeah, this is the state forms I previously told you. In, in the next slide, I will uh, explain it in deep. I am going back to my presentation. This is the very uh, powerful thing we have. Workflow manager plus generic form. So you, you already see uh, when in revised paper stage, you have uh, assigned a uh, resubmission form that's created by you. So other uh, see that form and other uh, fill, fill that form and you will get what are the desired uh, data you need I mean, without approaching any programmers or developers. You can, uh, the other thing is, uh, not only one form, you can create, you can assign as many as form you want. If the other need to fill two or three forms, you can create two or three forms. Those will appear in separate tabs nicely. That's the way. Uh, these are the unique thing I want to uh, show you. Uh, if you have any doubts, we can discuss about it. Mm -hmm. If you have any um, questions so far, or shall we continue? No, if you could um, just just repeat that, please. Uh, actually, uh, we, want we want to discuss this detail in the uh, next presentation where, the, where we, are, we, we are going to discuss about the permissions. We have uh, a, a different kind of permission system. You see, I will, you see this is a workflow and uh, our permission system is who is able to do this stage or who is going to work on this stage. You can assign uh, the user role here, assistant editor. This is an extended role. Once the assistant editor is assigned to this stage, he is the only person able to do this. I mean, as assistant editor is a user role. Uh, maybe uh, one assistant editor you have 100 users. So 100 users, one of uh, these 100 users only can do this job. When he checked out that article, no one else, even no assistant editor will be able to uh, do that task. So this is the kind of permission a system uh, we have based on stage, based on workflow stage, then assign user to it. Okay, C can I just, so uh, am I right that, sorry, go ahead. I, I, 
I, I think the answer is, Shaji will correct me, um, no, the, the, uh, it's exactly the same uh, role as the core role, but the flexibility it gives you is that you can assign them to different stages. Is, is that right, yeah. Shaji? And, yeah, and another thing, uh, another thing is uh, the difference between core roles and user roles. You cannot create users into core user roles. You can add user to assistant editor or EBM, but not to the core role. So, uh, you, you are extending 10 user roles from, suppose you are extending 10, 5 user roles from associate editor uh, and adding 5 users each to these roles. These 5 uh, users are different. I mean, uh, they cannot, uh, I mean, uh, Sorry, the sound from there is not very good. Not the great. Yeah. 
Yes, we can assign to a particular user, um, but I think what, what Charlie is saying that we could, it, it, it would be better to, to call that particular person, even, even give them a nickname, and, and then give, uh, give, give a user role to them. But if necessary, we can assign. We can actually assign to a particular user. Is that right? Uh, uh, yeah, actually, uh, this is. Uh, uh, we we have two uh, kind of you know, assignment operations. Uh, what we were see, what we were discussing was about journal. It's a it's a uh, big 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 scope because hundreds of articles will be it. So assigning a particular stage to uh, a single user may not be good because there will be hundreds and thousands of articles going to come. But you can individually manage an article. You can individually manage an article. I mean, you can individually uh, alter you, the flow because uh, if you if you find one stage is not uh, needed for an article, you can you can do that, and uh, you can easily override. I mean, the other thing is there is we have already in journal workflow we have already assigned a user role to a stage. But in a uh, article workflow, you feel that it is not needed. There is not this user role, another user role, you can change it. You can also say that in this user role, only these are permit only these users. Or you can say that this user role plus these users from other users, the user roles. This is for, this is article level management, micro level management. In micro level management, you can do anything. But in a generic, uh, general workflow, uh, we are restricting it to user role. That's the, uh, that's the system we are, we are proposing. Mm -hmm. If you need, otherwise we can do that, but uh, I think this will... Uh, yeah, yeah. I, th I think just it, from what I understand, whatever you want, if you tell us what your ideal scenario is and what you want to do, we can certainly uh, uh, configure this. Um, so I'm happy if you have a, if you come back, just in the interest of time, I thought we'd move on. Is, is that okay? But it seems to me that we've got a, a subtle way of, of controlling this, uh, the, the workflow. Um, and I can come back to you with exactly our solution uh, later. Does yeah, that make I, sense? I, I can, if needed, I can demonstrate uh, well, one of our systems. Let's, let's just, I, mm. it's just in the interest of time. Yeah, okay, we can come back, as I say, we have, we have different, no, let's continue, please, Shaji, if you may. Fine. Uh, uh, yeah, any, any other question? Otherwise, we can move to the other doors. Yeah, fine. So, uh, the other thing is uh, about uh, assignment and inviting uh, reviewers. You, 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 you asked to see in this demo. Uh, actually, we have classification I have already uh, told you about uh, that custom classification uh, you can have any uh, any name for a classification and you can say that uh, it, it can be any key anywhere or it will be it should be from a definitive list we have and you can even set the relationship between two kind of classifications this is possible in our system uh, uh, 
this is the screen for our classification we have created a new kind of new uh, two classification one is journal topic and the other is journal subtopic you can see that uh, i was saying uh, you have to choose from uh, a list so I, I was i am entering the list here and uh, there is the it is hierarchical it is defining in this screen the previous screen options uh, you can see primary classification required yes no and uh, if custom primary classification is needed that means uh, does the user allow to enter cast this own keywords we are saying no and uh, secondary classification required yes what is the name of the secondary classification it is subtopic and uh, uh, enable classification hierarchy that means uh, the first uh, the second subtopic will be uh, the child of the first one and we you have to define that in uh, under the screen to define that uh, there is a screen above classification and uh, i am adding uh, a new keyword a new topic and in subtopic i am adding some the uh, new so topic and uh, this is child of big data electronics and new so whenever a user select big data as the top topic he will be uh, there will be option for him to choose any of the sub topic which is any data new sub topic small data this, this is the way you can manage hierarchy and uh, you can import uh, these keywords as in csv or xml format in your system so that uh, any kind of classification you can manage now we uh, only two kind of classifications are integrated if you need we can extend it to three or five or six in any number it's, it's as per as you wish and uh, yeah this is the uh, overview of our system the unique features of our system and uh, now i am going to uh, answer some of your queries uh, in the email one is uh, selecting and uh, inviting uh, reviewers we have already we have three kind of uh, selecting and inviting se I mean selection three kind of selecting reviewers one is automatic automatic assignment means uh, based on your condition based on the conditions you give we will configure the system and even we, we can provide an administrative module to adjust the values based on that condition the system will automatically pick the reviewers uh, based on their recent activity the id uh, reviewer will be first allocated that is the auto allocate system we have and we already implemented in some of our system this feature and uh, second is selection from a filtered list based on keyword or topic you will be displayed with a list of reviewers or keywords and uh, sorry list of reviewers and you can pick who you want to assign that is the second one third one is you can perform uh, a search uh, in our system and uh, they will provide you a list then based on that list you can assign volunteers it's a manual system we call and uh, uh, this is one of the complicated algorithm now you are seeing one of the complicated algorithm we got from our, one of our client uh, uh, they were this auto allocation auto allocation of uh, reviewers and uh, there is lot of I mean, there, there is score uh, there is uh, their availability the uh, reviewers can set i am not available from this day to this day then we will not pick that lot of conditions it's uh, around 10 or 15 conditions we have and uh, depending conditions if yes if no that, that kind of it's, it's complicated and uh, actually uh, we have integrated into the into our system and uh, the, this system is working perfectly and it will automatically pick the world days that is the auto assignment system we have um, can I just say, you said one of our clients, it's the same client, it's oh, IET. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the RPS system we set up, so we thought we'd show you that. Yeah.
can you uh, see the system? Yes. My screen resolution is much higher. Mm -hmm. uh, here you are seeing some panel one uh, There is not much to demonstrate in auto allocation because uh, it's allocating in a single click. So uh, I thought uh, we will show you uh, the screen. I mean, uh, where the invade button and the status of the volunteer. Here you can see uh, the first volunteer declared his uh, first first viewer declared his invitation. Uh, then we uh, the last one automatically assigned on his uh, decline, and uh, we haven't invited him. Uh, if we click invite, you will be asked with a confirmation. Uh, if if yes, a, an automatic mail will be uh, automated mail and. Uh, we have an email uh, email template system where, where you can customize uh, the content and uh, there is a lot of keywords so you can placeholders we, we call them placeholders like percentage name percentage so in that place the name of the reviewer will come and uh, article number lot of lot of thing lot of uh, due date assignment date etc etc remaining days lot of uh, placeholders we have created so uh, you can uh, uh, by a single click you can insert placeholders into the email template and uh, it will automatically substitute the placeholders with the actual values and send the mail to uh, the reviewer and uh, he can uh, by clicking a uh, link he will come to the page where, where he can accept or reject that invitation he will be uh, the uh, assigned per with the person who assigned uh, the reviewer will be notified by a uh, email because it's very important because uh, we don't want to miss uh, and declination because otherwise the event will be uh, what we say store. So uh, email confirm email notification will uh, go to the staff or admin who are assigned that reviewer, and then uh, the staff can assign another volunteer by clicking a pick another reviewer by click, by clicking a button. That's the kind of thing we have. Or we can remove a uh, reviewer one request or for because of some reasons we have and then uh, we can pick another viewer this is the screen usually this is the kind of screen usually uh, we are going, you are going to have when you choose auto allocation and uh, uh, the another one is uh, manual assignment manual assignment i will show you on screen where you can search for reviewers based on lot of criteria this is depends on you what are the criteria you need we can put it here and uh, click uh, generate report you will get a report of you will get a pdf report of uh, the available volunteers uh, mean reviewers uh, based on that list you can assign manually so we have three kind of uh, assignment uh, Later, we can show you the filter, filtering using keyword. Mm -hmm. Once after my demo, we can show you the filtering. Well, we, we've only got maximum 15 minutes, so I oh, think we'll so just go so ahead. So, yeah, yeah right. let's go through the, the main points, please. And then. Uh, so, the another thing uh, you, used to, you want to discuss about uh, the permission system, and uh, we've already. Uh, Discuss about the. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, all, all that is possible to, to um, so we've got uh, keywords, institutions, etc. Mm -hmm. You want to search, you want to find a, based on different criteria, you want a list of... Yeah, actually, uh, this is, uh, that screen. These are the keywords. You can select the keywords. And uh, these are the special, I mean, uh, this is hierarchical keyword, it's implemented. These are the keyword and... Uh, uh, if, if it is a 
face to face or something preferred in the I mean here is score what are, what is the score of the uh, reviewer anything you can select we can put anything here and based on that condition uh, based on the search result mm -hmm. uh, you can pick this is this will be integrated in the reviewer selection thing actually i'm showing a manual assignment operation where uh, the uh, staff will take a printout of this and assign it. Mm -hmm. It's a manual and a special requirement from our client. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in other systems, it will be integrated with the assignment operation. Yeah. So from here, you show that you get you go directly to the PDF, right? You are creating PDF, but you don't want a PDF. You actually want a yeah, list. Yeah, yeah, and and pick it because actually uh, the other system we have something like that. Yeah. If you, if so we can that. we can. Normally, we, we would have a list you can click on each one then. So the PDF report is because that was demanded in this particular uh, application. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have, most of our searches are live searches. Can we show a, 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 a sort of a live search? Um, which one? Con4. Con4? Um, yeah. I'll just see if I can find, uh, uh, I think, Con4, uh, B. So I'm just looking for a a good example. Can we go ahead? Can we come back to that? Just for. You can show it. I mean, uh, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe later, 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 and uh, you can uh, select the check boxes and uh, assign reviewer. That's the screen we have. I mean, uh, before ending this demo, we can show you that mm -hmm. in a conference site. Yeah. 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 Um, I'll look. F I'll look for an alter uh, alternative. But if you could go on, yeah. um, sure. Shaji. And. Uh, Mm 
No, no, there, there, will, be, there will be an email notification to the uh, four reviewers. If there is four or five reviewers, yeah, a, a reviewer made a comment, uh, the rest of the people will have that notification. Uh, they, can, uh, they don't need to come to the system, they can read the uh, discussion, they can uh, read the co uh, comment uh, online and, I'm uh, sorry, by in their email box and they can just reply to that email and that will be posted here and the rest of the reviews will be notified. Thank you and... Uh, uh, yeah, I think I found... I'm just going to try and uh, change the screen to just quickly show you uh, can you see me? Can tell me if you can see my screen, please. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, shall I show this? <laughs> yeah, so this is just a, a, a simple system. This is one implementation of, um, of choosing a reviewer. So, so the editor said, or associate, or whoever said, choose a reviewer. By default, it matches that what we, it, in this case is a conference, it matches whatever classification it is, in this case it's a section, and so it's found four reviewers here. Um, if I unclick that, oh, in this case it's matching, it's matching uh, all of them, sorry I didn't prepare this before, but normally if, if only two of these match, then, okay let me see, if I choose one of these, there we go. So what we've got is, no, this is still the same, yeah. So depending on if, if only two of these reviewers match that particular keyword, then when you click that, you, only, you, you see that. And you can have as many keywords in there or different kinds of classifications as, as you want. Then... Um, Another thing here is that if there's a lot of more data on each of these reviewers, instead of packing the screen, you've got to roll over so you can see more, uh, more information on each one. And if you have many of these reviewers, if you've got, I don't know, uh, uh, lots of these reviewers, and you want to select two or three for you know, to, to decide later, I can say click on this one and that one and shortlist them. These go into a shortlist, a bit like a sort of Amazon uh, um, basket. And I can say this reviewer 4 is more important, so get this uh, if there's some conditions, reviewer 4 will be asked before reviewer 3. Um, and each of these columns is sortable. So you can say, if you want to say, for example, the most recent, I can click on that, number rejected, number completed. So with this combination, you can get to the reviewers that you want. Does that help? History of the reviewer. Uh, yes. Um, again, this this one is not what I'm showing you is is one conference, uh, but you can choose the history of reviewers um, in one journal or more than one journal. Again, all of this is very easily configurable to your requirements. Reviewer account details, um, if, if 
Uh, not in this particular one. I'm going to change presenter again. Uh, change presenter to Shaji. So we've got our problem is we've got too 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 many things to configure. So. Uh, so uh, the profile page. You are you are asking about the profile page and how to set the other details. I can show you in. Uh, this system, this is the kind of profile for a reviewer we have, where he can set his status, uh, active or not, and how many applications currently the uh, reviewer can manage, and what are my specializations, what are my keywords, or what are my, or what, what, what I am capable to do, and uh, in which state I will not be available, and uh, if, if I have, if you have any preference, uh, in location programs, uh, this reviewer can say, I'm, I prefer this location. And uh, on that case, if face to face or uh, meeting is come, he can even set his other you know, minor preference like his dietary requirements or anything. If he set for special dietary requirements, there will be a box will appear mm. and he can enter his uh, inputs about his dietary requirements. Mm. But I, I think they were, that's useful. Yeah. So, so if we have a, so if we, then you look at a list of 10 reviewers mm -hmm. and you just want to click and get this information from there, uh, if you're an editor. Yeah, uh, I will show you, but, but uh, I staff will get, is this my, this is, I'm a reviewer and uh, yeah. it is my homepage, yeah. I'm going out and uh, come back as staff or admin. These are the world year, I mean, a reviewer list, and this is the kind of screen a staff will see about a particular reviewer. Yeah. Yeah. What is his expertise and what is his uh, specializations? Yeah. What is his availability? He is active. Even uh, in yeah. even in this system, uh, the staff can make a, a, a reviewer inactive based on his requirement. Mm -hmm. Maybe he is not, not able to log in the system. Uh, a telephone call come. Staff can make him uh, inactive. And, uh, this is uh, the thing I said previously, uh, the conditions, complicated conditions we have set for auto allocation, the score and uh, talent management. And uh, this is, if, any, we, if we conduct any training for that uh, reviewer, those things will be up here. Uh, these reviewers conducted this course and those mm. things. Me, okay. our, our own. Yeah, I think that That's probably doesn't apply to that. I'm, I'm mindful of the time. Um, talent management. Is, is any, anything we haven't answered. I know one thing is about the sending, we were talking about sending a review by, um, by, uh, by email. Um, is there any questions right now? No. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's what we've done for RPS is more complicated. So we're just trying to show that, uh, you know, we can do it. Um, th th there's no doubt we, we can do that. And, all, and really, we want to know precisely what your ideal requirements are. Oh, th th yeah, the answer is we, we can do all that if we know exactly what your requirements are. And this is far more... Uh, complicated than probably a peer review system that we've, we've just shown you. Um, just quickly, finally, on the um, 
the, this idea we had of someone uh, 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 submitting via email, uh, that is something we really want to have. We will have it by the end of this year. Uh, so that basically if someone wants to uh, submit, they can do by email. Shaji, do you want to say, say about yeah. that? There are two different, yeah, 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 just yeah. very briefly. Sure, I mean, uh, this is, uh, actually, uh, it, it, it has two uh, levels. One is, uh, if you have a specific journal, or specific, uh, yeah, specific journal, where you want uh, submissions from uh, some special groups, uh, where uh, for, for post email IDs you have, you can uh, enter those email IDs and uh, invite them to submit an article. Uh, when they reply uh, to that email, an article will be automatically created. The attachment will be saved, attached with the article, and uh, they will have. I mean, even the thing is, we are get rid of, we are getting rid of uh, the complicated login system because those are very maybe you are you are approaching very uh, very very uh, great process or someone who who has uh, not much time and uh, who don't want to spend time on login password and change profile, change password, those kind of things. So when they get an email, there will be a deep link. Uh, they can come to our system using the deep link or they can just reply back with the attachment. The order will be created and uh, the fields, we will create something from, uh, we, we will extract uh, the content from the email and uh, put those in appropriate fields. And uh, there will be confirmation we will send to the uh, order, say that uh, we have created the article, please come and verify and fill in uh, the uh, rest of the details. Then again, it's a deep link. They're, they're, it's a secure deep link because uh, there will be a lot of hashing and algorithms. Once they click on that link, the system will automatically they will enter in the system automatically and they can review their submission. They can put the, put the system put the thing they want to uh, they missed or uh, incorrect and submit the article is submitted. This way, the submission process is simplified and uh, you will get uh, more sub uh, more submissions from uh, esteemed persons. That's the one thing. Another thing is, uh, it's based on, uh, in the email, there will be a form. Uh, the user can fill in those form and uh, attach the uh, articles in that, uh, along with that email. We will extract the content of the form and the attachment and we will create the uh, articles uh, just by, through one, just email. This is the second solution. We are going to implement the first uh, solution, first, first proposal in a few months by uh, as Kaveh said by the end of uh, this year the second will take uh, much time because three times, uh, three months. the thing is uh, uh, people may not like to fill the form in email so we want to uh, find a solution I mean, uh, it should be friendly for the other two we want to find a solution for that that's the only that's the, that's I have I, I, I um, that's my point. Yeah, you said it right. So technically, it's not a problem. We just want to make sure that it's, it's, it's user-friendly. And we're thinking of a, a form. You fill in the form in the email. Anything that's missing, the system will email back and ask for more information. That's the, that's the overall idea. Just, just briefly repeat that if, if you would. Is that, if, where is that, e at what stage is, e is that email coming? So I, I think I'm, yeah, I misunderstood that. Uh, let me just think. 
email templates? No, this is an email coming at some point. We said that an email that coming from an author, mm -hmm. we would ingest it into the system. I mean the data. Mm. Data from the media, it's yeah. possible because yeah. we have the uh, from address in our system. Uh, actually, we have the from address in our system and uh, it says specific mailbox and uh, if for each notification there will be a unique ID. Uh, it's, it's actually it's simple because in the most of the forum side, the discussion side, it is already there. Uh, if you, uh, the email address will be uh, somewhat unique, uh, the reply address will be somewhat unique, the notification. When we send a notification, the reply address will be somewhat unique. So, uh, based on the reply address, we can identify uh, which author to which article mm. and uh, which stage, everything we can identify and uh, we can uh, inject that information to that stage. Can I, just, I, I think, Sarah, we probably misunderstood your question, so let me come, I'll read that and I'll come back to you with a short email, if I may. Okay, yes. So basically what we need to do is to set, set the, the, the sender of the address from the system. So when they reply, that we can have as many sort of sender addresses as we want, you know, author, query, at, IET, etc. That, we, so we know what they're replying to, we know who, who replied it, that can very easily and it will go into the audit trail. Reporting. Reporting. Yeah. Maybe we could share. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe reports from RPS because that that is not uh, we can yeah, show them uh, anything on that. Uh, actually, uh, in, uh, in our uh, our reporting is uh, versatile. We can have any kind of. Uh, any format of uh, reports, HTML, PDF, PDF you have already seen, HTML al already seen, XML, uh, even JSON, uh, CSV, I mean Excel spreadsheet, RTF, any kind of formats we are able to produce, I mean based on the client requirement. And uh, the another thing is, uh, it's a normal search, al always normal search facility, you have already seen normal search facilities available. Uh, the thing I think uh, you will be interested in is custom query because uh, you may need lot of uh, I mean uh, lot of reports uh, you, you want lot, lot of kind of uh, one minute it's not mm -hmm. one minute too many websites yeah. <laughs> So, what I am showing is a custom reporting facility where user can create their own reports. Uh, Sorry, the sound went there, but uh, we, I mean, the, the most of the reporting we have is what we, saw, we call live reporting. So we, we report live as, it, so you, as you, you search something and immediately it shows you on, on screen. Um, from that, you can always click and export it in any way you want, the PDF that you saw or, or, or CSV or any, kind of, any other kind of data. Um, so... I could show you screenshots, but maybe we can just show you this and uh, show you what, that you can actually search for anything you want, any combination, then press the button and output. Maybe I can show you uh, the reliable report uh, we have in our mm -hmm. system, in-house.
this is a high level report of our, of our production here uh, you are seeing uh, the uh, details of article how many time and how many how much time an article uh, took to complete those kind of details you are seeing and uh, you can see a particular article uh, took 15 hours 15 hours you can see uh, if you need more information of this article this is this report is relevant so if you need more details how, how this 15 hours came you can just click on this article title so you will be directed to another detailed reporting where you, you can see the other details you can see these people worked on this article and uh, this way uh, time taken it is here this way this 15 hour total 15 hours took and you want you want if you want you want uh, further more details because you are still doubt uh, one guy worked on four hours what he does you can click on that name and it will show you how that time achieved you can see uh, it is uh, a particular stage from this time to that time this much minute so uh, what I want to say you this uh, report is not a problem to us we are able to produce any kind of reports any kind of analytical report we have charts pie charts uh, bar bar any kind of reports and it can be comparable you, you can compare two uh, set of data and see what is happening visually what is happening and uh, the other thing is uh, we are supporting uh, normal tables and pivot table i can show you one pivot table that's a pivot table yeah yeah, yeah. this is the normal table uh, this is a normal data we have normal representation if you want to make this data into a pivot table just select pivot table and click search it will become a pivot table uh, with the normalized average i mean we are showing our in-house reporting so it's based on the timing and other things uh, here uh, not much data into it so the thing is uh, i can show you uh, on each stage for each person for example this julie have, has an average and uh, there is normalized average that means what is the normalized average of what persons doing and what is the exact average and uh, those kind of information the same data you are you were seeing previously as a table uh, we have converted it into a pivot table and uh, i can show you a uh, pie chart we have this based on a live data based on live data we are creating a pie chart of uh, the status of our article uh, and uh, the, the, the important thing is our, our, we, are, we are spending a lot of time for designing in the system so the data is arranged in our system in the most uh, structured way so uh, if we have a structured database you can create any report that you you know so uh, in future also you can create I mean we, we will you will have an interface to create your own reports if you can't be able to create we can create it because we are storing the data in the system it could be any format and uh, graph anything that's the assurance we can give to you mm. Yes, correct. Uh, um, we, yes, exactly. You, what we want to know is what you want to know. <laughs> what we want to know is exactly the ideal things that you want to look at. We will provide you with a, with a, a set of, if you like, standard reports. Then you can do this query builder, which, uh, which we were just going to show. You, you, can, you can actually search in a very, very granular way, as we've done for RPS uh, as well. Um, to, 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 and uh, to, to another thing, maybe uh, maybe Kavi um, missed you to show in uh, that RPS uh, is the uh, tracking because you can track what, what is the changes made in a single report. I'm afraid Kavi may, may not show you that. Yeah. You can see there is a uh, clock icon, there is a clock icon on the left side. 
This means uh, this record has a history. Uh, by clicking that thing, Yeah, by clicking that uh, thing, something is changed. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, no, this has no history. Let me check if there is something. Uh, uh, no, uh, I, I could not find a record which has history. The thing is, if there is any changes made in the system that will be logged separately, and you can see through uh, clicking a history icon, you can see what is changed. Uh, when we change and who made that change. This is the system uh, usually we have in house. Can you just show Query Builder very quickly? Yeah, the uh, Query Builder. Uh, actually, using Query Builder, you are doing, uh, you can do complicated, uh, you can build complicated SQL queries, structured query languages without knowing what it is. So, uh, you are selecting, you want to know uh, the unique application, the golden deer, the, the application who has unique, appli uh, unique application number like 20, that means uh, in some, any part of uh, the unique application is 20. Click add and then execute. You will get the result. You are seeing all the applications. There is 20, here is 20, here is 20, everywhere. I mean, if there is a 20 in the unique application number you will be that this will be shown here uh, the other thing is uh, it can be any operations it can be any operations you can i will show you the list equal greater greater than or equal to not equal to in that means you can have uh, persons from uh, this location this location this location you can simply do that and not in between two values not between two values so any kind of queries you can make. Usually, uh, you don't need to come to us to have a normal report. You can build your report using this query builder. And you can ex uh, export the data into spreadsheet and uh, do the analysis there. Maybe you can even plot chart based on the data in Excel. You, you see. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Multiple, multiple is possible. So we are going to say title, uh, like. Let me check the heading so I can first name. I am, I am going to select the first name, uh, like Harry. So it is two conditions where uh, the unique application should contain twenty and the first name should like Harry. Yeah, you got the result you want. Yeah, this is this is very powerful because it is it's, it's querying SQL uh, without without knowing having to know it. Yes, and, and in practice, anything in the metadata will be available uh, in that uh, first drop down. It's a long list, you can see, it's a long list. Long list. <laughs> Probably much more than they need, but. Yes, between. Oh, I think we can build that in. So, so Shaji, if, if I have a report, can I choose? Can I save that as a favorite report? 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. these conditions. Yeah, yeah, sure. So yeah. next time. You next time, uh, select it from a drop down. And uh, it can be globally or personally. Yeah. If, if, a report, if you feel a report is globally important, you can save it as globally. And or you can save it for your personal use. Sure, take your time. No, not not at all. I mean, Figshare, all of the, lots of these uh, uh, sort of, if you like, the auxiliary sites. Uh, you know, things like Figshare, Orchid, uh, um, Counter, Authenticate, etc. These are, these are all standard things and, and Figshare has a very good API, so there's no problem there. Um, I believe so. Hold on, please. My screen. Okay, uh, this is a, okay. This is a demo site for conference. I'll um, I'll try in five minutes to submit a paper, etc. I have logged in as conference admin here, and this has proxy login on on this site. So I'll go as an author. Log in as an author. I have. This is what I've done so far. I say I want to submit an abstract. Now our conference sites, they have a, uh, we have a two uh, stage, um, we have a two stage uh, peer review system. Uh, so for some reason this, I just clicked on this, this is not going. Yeah, so you can have an abstract that is uh, peer reviewed and then the main paper, the conference, the, the PDF file, can be peer-reviewed as well. Um, and that's really up to, up to you, whether, whether, you know, whether you want uh, uh, that or not. So I've just said, I want to submit a paper. Are you the only uh, user on the list? Clearly all these are, uh, you, can, you, can, uh, uh, um, uh, you can configure this. So this is my paper. Keywords here is uh, keyword. This can be obviously from a down, drop down list. Presentation format is it oral, poster, etc. I say it's oral, my preference. Which section? If you have sections in a conference, this can go into a particular section. And I'll put a lorem ipsum in here. If I want math, this one particular one has got, you know, you can put LaTeX math in. We have full LaTeX, by the way, in all our systems with math jacks, etc. So it knows who I am. That's it. I've done that. If I've made a mistake, I can say, uh, I can go in here and say this is not my paper. I don't know if that will be uh, accepted or not. 
save and return, and I can say, say uh, submit abstract now. As far as I'm concerned, that is done. I've submitted my abstract. Um, so that goes to the, now the editor of that conference, or whatever you want to call him, they gets a deep link. They go to new submissions, and they find this is not my paper, so they click on that and have a look at it, uh, accept reject, they, in this case they have that facility, or invite reviewers. So invite reviewers, now you saw this before, it's now matching the section, there we go, now you can see it, that if you match that by default, it's, it's having shown reviewers that definitely uh, match that section. So I'll choose reviewer one, invite to review, and that's the email that goes out, I say that, yeah, that's fine, and the review has been invited. So if I now go as reviewer one, I will get a deep, in fact, I'll get a deep link. When I click on it, I go straight into this page and I have a look at that. And reviewer one has a look at it. Okay, I'll agree to review. And that goes into my pending. I click on pending and have a view of it. Now I can say prepare review recommendation. And here, this is all, you can choose, the admin can change all of these, these are all questions, they can be drop down check boxes as Shaji showed you. This is a really minimal page we've done for, uh, for this particular one. And then this is a, key, this, for example here, this would be good as a keynote. Uh, Laura Mipsum again. And then, so that's comments to the editor, confidential, this is comments to the author and uh, preview and submit, have a quick look at it. Yeah, that looks good, submit recommendation. Deep link again, uh, this goes to the, um, to the, uh, now the editor gets, now you also have section editor, so if you want you can have a second level, the section editor decides, that's, uh, that's, that's an option, but in this case we have uh, under, under review, what have we got? No, let me go back. All the reviews complete. So if I look at reviews. Third one. Third one. Oh, it's a long time since I. Yeah, reviews complete. Anyway, they get a deep link, so they don't have to think about that. So have a quick look at that. And uh, I can see the co authors and the review recommendations come here. Now, if you've got several reviews, five or six, we've set up an accordion view here, so you can, you can easily see them. And. Um, I say fine, uh, and I say yeah. I can either accept more, more uh, invite more reviewers, or I can say accept, um, and that's it. And if the author now goes in, author gets a deep link, and has a quick look, and uh, so accepted. Um, there we go. So that's that's an overview of uh, of conference. Uh, in five minutes. There's more, of course. <laughs> no problem. Yeah, and I can prepare just, just the conference uh, presentation for you. Now, an important thing is that the, the, our review system, the, one, the, the single system will work with journals and books and conferences, and you can use the same database, and it won't mix them up, it knows which is which. Oh, is that the time? I'd better rush. <laughs> oh no, yes.
Uh, sure, we have a document for disaster recovery and business con continuity. We can send you. Um, let me just uh, let me just pass on the mic to uh, to Shaji so about hosting in Germany. And, um, mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, we have a diagram of our physical architecture. Later, uh, it explains the things, thing. but I can explain it for you again. Uh, our main server, I mean, we have a router in uh, a special location. So all all the requests goes to that router. Usually, that request goes to a primary data center, uh, which is in Germany. And uh, if there is any issues with that uh, server, it will automatically switch to the second uh, data center. These two data centers are connected through VPN and uh, the data will be synced between these uh, uh, data centers. So uh, the switch will not be affected or there is nothing uh, will be visible to uh, the user. Uh, it's some kind of uh, not not badness, it's a disaster recovery plan. We are, uh, primary disaster recovery plan. In our data center also there is load balancer and two web servers and we have a primary database and a secondary slave database which is also same. And we have I mean, uh, the primary data center as I said earlier in Germany and our second data center is with Amazon in US. And we have backup in India, physical backup in India which is scripted and which, uh, the backup will be taken in uh, hourly backup, will be incremental backup. So all the all uh, it's not necessary to back up all the data. We will take we will take only the incremental data backup in our Indian server. So uh, we have three locations, uh, uh, two live locations, uh, only Germany and US. So uh, there will be no interruptions. Even if there is any disaster simultaneously, Indian and uh, uh, so in German and US, we can up the site in a few minutes in India. Because we have internet backup. So new features, how do we um, releasing new features? Yeah. Uh, features. Uh, actually, uh, with uh, IET also IET we have also a practice for releasing new features. Uh, we will have a uh, staging site, uh, or rather live site, we, are, we will have a staging site, staging environment for releasing new features. A new feature will be released on that staging site for, the, for, the, for getting acceptance from the client. Once the uh, client is accepted, we will transfer that changes to the live site and that will be notified when we are going to do that uh, transfer and uh, if, if there is any uh, out, outage we are expecting, anything we will be notified and usually there will be no outage and uh, uh, it will be neat and clean the uh, transfer of changes. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we answered the question correctly Praveen, what, were you saying that if there is a new feature, whether that's automatically put in or whether you have to ask for a new feature? Um, okay, the, the, there is standard sort of updating where we, we just we simply update that and you shouldn't see a, a difference. A bit like when I don't know, a, 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 a Gmail it improves without, without telling you. Those are safe 
updates that, that, that just keep the system going. If there's a new feature that you request, then if it's not in the, you know, the standard set that we had, we would give you a, a quote and we would write that feature and implement it for you. If there is a new feature that we think would be useful for you, if it's a standard one, we would just do, ask you and we would do it. Something that, for example, we think that should be in the system and we're using for other people, we, we will just put it. If we think that it's useful for you, again, we would suggest and ask you to, if you want it, we'll give you a quotation. And uh, one more thing is, uh, only security updates will be done in the system without your prior uh, permission because it's very critical. So we will do the security updates without any outage and other things in the server itself. And other all other changes will be asked you and uh, only after your approval we will update in the site and it will be subtle, there will be no major changes in the system. That's the way we do with the changes. Yeah, I mean, yes, you, I think you can rest assured what we have is probably hundreds of modules that we are putting together. And we can build a system by putting the modules together. And these are, these are standard modules with a configuration. Um, so what we're using, for example, for the present IET system, many of those, exact those are used in, in other systems. Um, you know, but you wouldn't know it was the same. So, no, it's not a bespoke system that you are completely, you know, uh, separate from, from, from other implementations. Um, you can certainly search by individual authors. So are you saying you might want to search for three particular authors? Do you, um, I'm just going to change my uh, change presenter. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, uh, multiple, multiple authors, authors, okay. Okay. Uh, multiple conditions. conditions. Uh, one minute, uh, one minute, log in the system. Low system. Uh, I'm assuming uh, that you were asking about uh, searching with multiple. Yeah. One minute. Actually, the, the best thing is if you just, I think, we didn't, could you please rephrase that again? So rather than, uh, the, I don't need as much time for a demonstration, but. Mm -hmm. Do you mind just saying, if you had, you wanted a list of, you had a list of all the authors, uh, and then, can you say that again, please? Search and you can get the report. And actually, uh, uh, I can assure you that uh, reporting is not a, not going to be a problem for you because uh, uh, we have the data and uh, 
we will give you standard reports what are the reports you are listing initially we are listing we will give you that reports and another thing is we will give you a custom report generator so based on that condition for example like the query uh, builder you see you can create a you can pick a pick the applications and uh, uh, just select the other name equal to and type the other name click add execute you will get the report Yeah. Um, I'm going to be sending out a project request questionnaire mm -hmm. called Tender. It's just to kind of get a bit of understanding of uh, how the Tender would work and type for and the storage that we're using and best practices. So, okay, so you should be uh, receiving that sometime tomorrow. Yep, yeah, no problem at all. Look forward to that and thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you for the time. Bye-bye. Whew, long meeting. Huh?